So they had taken satellite imagery of the ocean floor. And what they discovered was that there was some kind of strange anomaly on the surface of the, of the floor of the ocean. But they couldn't actually see what the details were. Now, the images somehow got into the internet and there was a lot of speculation about what, what this might be. And you got the usual suspects. It was a UFO which had somehow been submerged. It was something from the Anunnaki. There was some kind of structure or form that had been created on the ocean floor that looked so otherworldly that it created a moment where people were really concerned about what this might be. So the problem was, was that this thing was very deep and there wasn't much technology that could actually reach those depths. But there was an international sort of funding for the operation and they got together and they decided to, to figure out how can we get down and look at what might be down there? What is this structure? There was also another group who were like, just leave it alone. Don't go down there. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is the end of the neck or something. You know, don't mess with it. You know, some things you just leave them alone. You're best to leave them alone and don't touch them, right? Because it's, it's too dangerous to go down there. So there was already a conflict going on, you know, on the surface. On the surface, there was a conflict. There was like a, and you know, like as the boats were preparing to leave the harbor, there were demonstrators and there was like pretty much all out war trying to stop these boats from leaving the harbor to go and discover what actually was down there. But they finally got away and they, they got out and they started moving out towards the ocean. Now, one of the things was, is that as they got out into the center of the ocean, there had been some talk as like, it was so deep, the profound depths of where this, this object was, uh, that they were worried, you know, they didn't know what was, what kind of things they had to deal with. Now they knew there was like pressure, uh, but they were kind of confident, you know, the submarines that they had could maybe get down to that level and they might be able to sort of withstand the pressure. Because what happens is as, as objects, this is the crazy thing, as objects go down to the bottom of the ocean floor, there's like, I guess it's measured in atmospheres, but there's hundreds of like hundreds of atmospheres of difference of pressure. So the, whatever it is, which goes down gets compressed into like these sort of atomic like little sizes as much as they can and obviously like with steel structures and things which are quite strong that's more difficult to accomplish um but there's this like compression that happens and so they were worried about that now the people on the shore they were like oh no don't go down there there's like giant squids and you know it was getting ridiculous. I mean, they were like caught up in this fantasy world about like giant squids and, you know, aliens and Anunnaki and whatever. And, you know, the more scientifically minded people were like, listen, it's just the ocean. We got submarines. We're going to go down there. We're going to find out what this thing is, right? It's probably nothing. But again, like the satellite imagery it had these strange forms, which were, which were unusual. And they didn't really, they didn't really know what this was. So they, anyway, cut a long story short, they, they get the boats out there and uh, they begin the the uh, exploration uh, operation. So they get the submarines together and they start going down. So they go, they go down and they're going down. And of course, you know, they get to the specific depth where the light cuts out from the sun. I think it's like 2000 meters. I'm not sure what the depth is, but there's a certain there's a certain depth whereupon there is no more sunlight and you go into complete darkness. And that's why you see a lot of those fish down at the bottom of the ocean. Like they've got those little like lanterns out in the front. Maybe not a lot of them, but you know, you do see those pictures. Uh, but the, uh, the whole atmosphere, the whole thing changes. And so the further and further you go down and you're sort of leaving the can of the common man, you know, I mean, Humanity lives up in the sunlight, in the air, and then as you go down to this pressurized environment, further down and further down, you leave the air, light, everything behind, and you're left in this bubble. 
this bubble and maybe there's a camera outside and you're going out you're going down and down and down and further down and further down and further down I'm thinking about James Cameron when he was doing those uh, Titanic movies you know he was doing this going down and going down and down and so they get down there and sure enough there's this amazing structure it's a it's a sort of weird angular structure but it's completely covered with sand and like other detritus of the ocean and they're like you know they don't know what it is and you know it's they don't have much equipment you know but they've, they've got a couple of robots and they, they send these robots out to start start trying to clean clean away some of this sand and some of this this material which is covering this structure so they can try and understand what is this what did we see from up there what is it which has caused so much fear on the outside on the outside world and, and what is it so they spent a few days doing this and there there's like some machines I guess you can use which actually clean clean the area out now this was obviously very difficult and they had to actually invent new technology to do this at the time because because it was so deep so they had to come up with these sort of new sort of unknown techniques to actually come down and be able to perform like a wholesale cleaning of the area but they were able to do it and what they discovered was that in fact it wasn't aliens or it was nothing scary what actually happened was it it was a treasure ship it was a treasure ship which had been sunk and it was it was quite old it was an old treasure ship and what actually happened is really interesting is what happened is this treasure ship hadn't been sunk by anybody it had actually been scuttled because what had happened is uh, this ship apparently this is what they discovered is the ship had been sailing and it'd been filled with gold and other treasures jewels but they this there was this fear that they had at the time of piracy and other problems on on the ocean and what had happened at that moment uh, when they decided to scuttle the ship was that they were convinced that there was going to be some kind of takeover of their ship so instead of giving away and it was like the sovereign jewels like the crown jewels and instead of giving them away to this other force they decided the the most honorable thing to do would be just to scuttle the ship and and let it burn and go down to the bottom and so that's what they did so their national treasure sunk to the ocean floor and it was the most beautiful lustrous costly marvelous thing which you can imagine over the years with time the sands and the currents of the ocean built up around the carcass of the ship and as a ship had fallen down from above and sunk down through the pressurized environment it, it cracked and broken and sort of formed a sort of the angular structure as it broke into this sort of strange form and it collapsed to the bottom of the ocean and that is where it sort of got covered with with sand and all the other uh, all the other things of the ocean to hide its contents so what you actually had was you had this amazing treasure which out of fear had been essentially destroyed and hidden in the most profound depths but the strange thing about it was even though it was down there there was a, there was an awareness of it from the satellite imagery and that satellite imagery created more fear so what happened is the national treasure which is the most wonderful thing which they had out of fear was destroyed and then because it'd been destroyed out of fear created a, a crazy amount of nonsense in the pub the general public because they started thinking no it's like there's there's uh there's space aliens down on the, the ocean floor or there's some kind of evil or whatever it might be but actually it was the national treasure it was like this huge disconnect because of because of fear so you know obviously I'm not really talking about uh, a national treasure what I'm talking about is I'm talking about what 
often happens to people and the national treasure may actually be the best part of who you are and you may scuttle the best part of who you are and sink that into your unconscious never to be found again but it will be found again you will find it and much like those crazy demonstrators in the harbor you might think that whatever is sunk down beneath you though you don't recognize it though it actually is the best part of who you are you're going to start thinking it was it's evil it's got all this potential to do to do something but you see what was really what was really negative was just the lack of awareness on all levels there was a lack of awareness there was a bunch of fear creating this this scuttling of this of who you were and sinking this marvelous wonder and destroying it but not destroying it creating a different form hiding it and so what needs to be done is somebody needs to go down to the bottom and pull this up and re-examine what it might have been now i mentioned james cameron there you may have seen that james cameron film called the abyss and the abyss is this really great film about uh something very similar to this they find they find uh something under the ocean they're not sure what it is and they go down an exploration and in the exploration they go down and they discover it's actually this alien life form which is actually the most wonderful thing and there's so much fear and everybody's really scared about it but actually it turns out to be this beautiful wonderful thing which opens up the awareness of all humanity and in fact I'm pretty sure that film is some kind of metaphor for some other kind of process right when you look at that film and you see there's this great sort of worm made of water which comes through and tries to communicate and what that really is it's the it's like the touch of consciousness trying to connect with each one of us is what it is and you see everybody many people in their own way have got their own shipwreck or many shipwrecks at the bottom of their unconscious and they're still there and those structures even though they're hidden create subtle impressions and sometimes not subtle impressions sometimes they have sort of cognitive emotional impacts upon your awareness and your everyday life which you don't understand and you don't understand why you're behaving in certain ways but actually what's happening is there's a pulse or a current emanating from the hidden depths of this treasure which once was so proud and wonderful but has been smothered and hidden out of fear